be painting this panel today. And a lot of time and effort. This project took approximately nine hours to complete. So let's get started. Okay, so um, what we're going to do here is um, uh, we're going to make a panel for a customer so he can see what I'm thinking uh, based off of what he, the information that he's given me for the paint job of his motorcycle. Uh, he knows what he wants, but he doesn't know how to convey to me uh, exactly what he wants. So uh, he's told me that he's wanting a, uh, you know, uh, a small graphic with a uh, with a spider maybe uh, call the bike a uh, black widow okay what I've got here is a piece of red scotch bright pad and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scuff this which will allow a mechanical bond for the paint to adhere to the aluminum It's going to be a framework for my, for my artwork. This is just a, a protection tape. So this is the only thing that I'm taping now. It's the only thing that's going to be brushed aluminum. Everything else will be painted red. Now I've already put one coat on this. This is cinder red. This is going to go down before I put on my uh, base. So I put down my base first, sand it, and then put another coat down. Not all painters do this, but this is what I like to do. It comes out far better paint job if you do it this way. Now, what I've got on this now is about three coats of KVC, candy base coat, house of color red. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to lock this in with some SG100, which actually will help in the product bleeding through my artwork. Um, candies have a real bad problem of bleeding, so just experiment before you start uh, working on somebody's project and then discover that you painted something white, and then when you clear coat it, it turns pink. Okay, what I've done here is I've added a true candy, which is a UK, or you can use the KK, which is candy concentrate, put in your SG100. It's actually transparent, where the candy base coat is somewhat transparent, but it has a metal flake and it covers a little bit quicker than your KK or your UK. Now what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to put my SG100 over the top of all this. What I've got here now is a uh, masking that I've created on my computer. Now, as you can see, we have a pattern on here that we can spray through. That helps get everything straight in the areas where we want it, makes the lettering perfect and everything My goal like on this is to make this spider web look chrome like it's, it's uh, made first. out of metal. So we're going to put a layer of white on here. And it doesn't have to be a real heavy layer because we're going to be putting black over top of this and some blue and uh, different different colors and this is just made to knock out the red. Alright, I'm going to do a small section here uh, so you can uh, see how this is done. I'm not going to uh, videotape the whole process because it, this is going to take you know, several lines some of these effects. So what I've done here, I'm going to paint this black, I'm going to leave this white, but I have to create this effect right here, coming around the velvet edge. So, I'm going to have to take and, uh, split this down the middle, create my bevel, and then this is going to be beveled here, and then this can have a bevel right here. So I protect this, and I have to protect this. Now I'm going to take, take my black paint and paint this in a uh, shadow. I'm not painting all of it black, I'm just painting up that line black. Edge. 
This is the part where it gets kind of boring for uh, people to sit and watch you because they have no idea of what you're trying to accomplish by taking this and taking that and they, they don't see the, the end result yet. It's hard for them to visualize that. That's why I don't want to videotape this whole process because it's just, it's just a lot of uh, time involved and it's, it is a somewhat uh, boring process. Now I gotta come in and do my, my reverse bevel right here. Now keep in mind that we want to keep this top edge white. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do my reverse bevel down here on the inside of that framing. All right, so now I want to remove my tape carefully so I don't disrupt my, disturb my masking. Already, you can see. That okay, that so um, here's a sneak peek so far. Um, if I can zoom in here so you can kind of see some of that detail on that. Um, now we're going to have to add some glue and some hot spots and peel this whole thing off. It's going to be a really nice looking spider web. Okay, the next thing we're going to do here is um, the lettering. The lettering is. And I'm going to determine which way is black and which way is white, and I'm going to uh, bevel, take them, bevel these. In that, uh, that fashion. And some of these little areas right here, what I'll do is uh, I might use my fingernail or I might use something. Uh, a little freehand mask to uh, make a curve on that. Okay, so what we've got now, we've got all of our black and white painted. Let's see if I can get in here close a little bit for you guys. Now I'm going to paint some candy blue, and that will actually work for the reflection of the sky. Uh, that's what you want to use your blue for, is, it, is your sky. Okay, now I've got a spider in this area right here, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna peel the spider out of my masking. Now, then next thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this just in case I need to use it for a protection mask. Now, I'm going to protect all of my spider web that I've just spent so much time on, and I'm gonna protect it and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna freehand paint this spider.